Welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. As you may know from our previous video, the essential documents of each clinical study are the study protocol, the investigator's brochure, and the case report form. Today, we will present another closer look on the case report form. This video is part two. If you haven't already, please watch part one first. You will find it above. More after the intro. In our first video about the CRF, we showed that a CRF has five modules. We showed the modules one to three last time and we'll continue with module four now. Module four refers to the study conclusion. Withdrawal of a patient from a study can have many reasons. The desired outcome is of course the regular end of a study in accordance with the protocol, but possible reasons for early withdrawal are withdrawal of patient consent regarding his or her study participation, pregnancy, death of the patient, appearance of side effects, non-compliance meaning non-compliant conduct of the patient with the protocol, regarding for example the intake of study medication, administrative factors or the untraceableness of the patient for follow-up examinations, loss to follow-up. If a patient withdraws his or her consent, he or she may always do this without giving any reasons, however, you should inquire. The reason, for example, could be the appearance of side effects, which should be documented. If you don't ask, important information is lost. This page of the CRF contains notes on whether the study was completed properly, including all visits, or whether a patient withdrew from the study too early. In case of early withdrawal, the corresponding date the date of the last dose of study medication and the main reason for early withdrawal must be documented. Finally, the principal investigator agrees on this page to continue subject follow-up examinations and to report any new adverse drug reactions that may occur up to 30 days after the last dose of study medication. He also supplies on this form any further information relating to continuing persisting AE that is relevant to subject safety. Module 5 refers to the acquisition of drug tolerance. Here the concomitant drugs given to the patient are acquired, adverse events and serious adverse events are documented, and the endpoints of study participation are recorded. One possible endpoint, depending on the study, would be for example the achievement of a certain medical condition, such as a stroke, heart attack, recurrence of cancer, or death. It is important for you to understand that data on CRF pages have to be logically linked. Thus, increasing the drug dosage or giving a new medication implies that any condition has deteriorated. In this case, simultaneous documentation of an adverse event would be the logical consequence. Here is an example of the CRF page in Module 5, on which the non-pharmacological treatments and procedures are acquired. As you can see, physiotherapy, as well as ECG and dental treatments are listed. Please note that actions must also be listed here. This is vital in the collection of laboratory data connected to the control of concomitant diseases. Here the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus has been abbreviated to DM by the investigator, which cannot be accepted as an entry because the data management must not guess data. So much for today. We hope you learned something interesting in our second part about the CRF and are looking forward to see you next time. Have a great day. Hey there, don't forget like and subscribe, but most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.